back to the channel guys and ladies and VW community and thank you for being here especially the new subscribers also I'm gonna do a short film today obviously it's probably gonna be a 15 minute film or something what you should look for when buying a Beetle now that doesn't make me a professional but I've been around them for 40 years so I got a good idea what to check uh, Oftentimes, you know, especially when I was younger, we go and buy a beetle and we get so excited, we tend to miss things. And obviously the owner is not going to point them out to you because we want to hurry up and get home and drive our beetles that we just bought. Your friends are all standing around cheering. Yeah, uh, you, you don't want to fall victim. Not everybody is honest out there, and we know that. Even though the VW community is a wonderful community, but just because a guy selling one doesn't mean he's going to get as most as he can get out of that car. And remember, when somebody puts a car up for two grand, technically you could probably get them down a little because they always put more than they want, and that's with any car. Uh, so let's take a look around. Mine's a 73 Super Beetle, but this is going to go for all Beetles because from the door back they're all the same the only thing different in the front is the struts and uh, the front apron things like that and I'll go over that with you too it'll make sense even if it's a standard beetle it don't matter you're gonna be checking the same thing so let's take a look and remember it can also help you in lowering a price on a beetle that you're purchasing because the new owner, you're not going to insult him by saying, oh, the heater channel's uh, rotted or the Napoleon hat's rotted underneath. Uh, he's not going to say, oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah, he will. But you can point these things out and get the price reduced. You can fix up any beetle. Anything can be fixed in life. Remember that. However, can you afford to fix it? These are very inexpensive cars to work on. But... It's if you want to put that type of money into them, and if you have the knowledge. VW, VW community is big, so there's, the knowledge is out there. Yeah, the truth is out there. But anyhow, let's take a look around. Come on, let's see this. Okay, as I said, mine is a Super Beetle, but it don't matter. You're still going to be long, doing the same basic thing when you're going over them. So let's take a look first at the front real quick. Mine's a mess inside, the stuff everywhere. The gas tank don't belong there, you know that. Anyhow, when you're looking at a Super Beetle, you want to take the spare tire out, drop it on the ground hard, look around, see if this is rotted out. That's a cover to get down inside. Look around see if it's rotted out this one obviously is very solid so you want to do that take a look around the areas the strut areas is there any rot around the struts now on a standard beetle here's a picture here down in the spare tire well because the tire sits this way you want to look down inside where the bottom of the spare tire sits if the bottom of the apron is rotted out so you definitely want to check that area. So, start checking the lines. See if the lines are way off. My needs adjusted. Remember, I'm doing this while my car's apart so that you guys can see. I just think it's the best time to do it while my stuff's all off. Check and see. Look at the line here. Nice and even. It may not look at it on film, but it really is. Look inside here get down on the ground look inside the front fender is there any wrinkling here at all to tell you if the car was pushed in a little bit and then they tried to repair it this is where the bumper bolts to check those areas take a look check your tie rods you can simply do that by grabbing the wheel at nine and three o'clock and shaking it back and forth while off the ground and see if the tie rod's bad. Those are very inexpensive, but it gives you a little leverage on lowering prices. So let's go underneath here a minute. Okay, so we're underneath. You're going to look up inside. Where are the master cylinder bolts? Is it rotted out in that area? 
very important. Look underneath. All across here. Mine isn't rotted, but believe it or not, I have to sneeze. Crap. <coughs> Mine needs wire wool and cleaned up and painted. But look underneath. Is there rot at the tunnel? Is there rot at the frame head? Very important. <coughs> Check it all along. Look at the floor pants. See what they look like. This stuff is very, very important. But remember to check that frame head really good. Look at the front. This is tough because I can't get my car that high, but you'll see what I mean. Check the frame head. Make sure none of that is rotted out. That's what you want to check under the front end. While you're underneath, look all down here. Make sure all this is solid. It's very important. Mine is solid. These are some bad examples, but mine just need wire rolled up and painted and cleaned. Make sure you check all of that underneath that front end. Now, another spot so you see where we're at is down along here. That's your heater channel. It comes clear up through and around. Check that area for rot. They can rot there. Mine, that's old undercoating underneath here and seam sealer check this take a little like a little screwdriver and just tap along here make sure it's solid if the owner says anything just tell him could i tap this area to make sure it's solid if he says no don't do that well then kind of be careful this is where your running boards would attach to check along there make sure it's not rotted out Make sure it's solid. You can reach up inside of the running board to check that area. All right. Next place, as you're walking around, make sure the fenders, where they bolt around it, make sure the seam's right all the way around. Now, the fender beading that goes in could be off a little because people don't take their time, but make sure the fender's not gapped at any point. That could mean accident. Look around the windshield. The windshield will be in, obviously, but this is a nice example. Dent. Look around the windshield for rust. That's not rust on mine. The paints came off here. Look for rust because that can mean that this lip in here that holds the windshield in is actually rotted out. So you definitely, definitely want to check for rust around here. This is a good example while my windshield's up. If this lip is rotted on the inside, you know, you're pretty much done. So check for rust around here. You do that on any car, honestly. Check the rain gutters. Are the rain gutters clean? Are they rotted off and ready to fall out? Check the rain gutters really well. Okay, back to the doors. See how my seam's nice and even? Nice and even. A little tight there, that's normal. Nice and even. Check for large gaps. See how it's even all the way down? And look here. Don't pay attention to these holes. It's a different ear door. See how they're nice and lined up? That's where your door handle is. Them lines. Check. And then when you open it, See how mine just opens? Oops, I didn't close it hard enough. Mine don't drop. If the door drops down, then you got either a problem with the hinge pins or that's rotted out right there. One of the two. <clears throat> and uh, you'd rather replace hinges than you would uh, to deal with rot down there. <laughs> And this is where your heater channel goes up and through. So make sure you check this area really well for rot. As you look in here, let me get the light down. Look this over real well. If there's carpeting there, obviously you're not going to be able to pull it back. I don't think the owner is going to appreciate that. But do the best that you can to pound on it. Check there for rot. Check both sides really well. Make sure them heater channels are solid, unless you plan on doing a project card and replacing them. <clears throat> Obviously, you know to check your floor pans. 
mine are solid. Check them really, really well. And make sure you check them heater channels. That's very important. Check for rot here and back in there. Just lift the back seat up. They'll let you do that. If they don't, then they're definitely hiding something. Make sure the doors shut nice and easy. That's the way I have mine. They're all gapped right. They're fine. So make sure to check that stuff. Another thing to check, have a little magnet with you and see if this is all filled with Bondo because they're notorious for rotting out there. So you could see where I met, right there. Check that area. They saw a panel for it, but check. Behind here, if you see bubbles, any type of little bubbling, all right? Inside the body inside there is that expandable foam. They put it at the factory. I remove it out of mine. I go up through with the coat hanger and get it all out. That foam holds moisture. Many of these have rotted here. So if you check that area and it's bubbled a little bit, well, then you know you're going to have to deal with it. However, now you want to, when you remove that foam, you want to fill it in. I use headliner material with some stuffing so it don't hold moisture and it's like a little bean bag you're shoving up in there and it keeps everything out of the passenger compartment. However, with this area, put a magnet around there. See if they just filled it with Rage or Bondo and smoothed it real pretty. Check down in here for rot and I'll back up so you see where I was. Down in there, check for rot. It looks like it's missing. It's not. There's black paint there. Check all through here. Mine's there's undercoating under the paint that you're seeing. Okay, as we come to the back, make sure there's an engine in it. <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. Your rear apron. When you're closing the rear deck, go along the seam and see. Mine needs a new rear apron. Somebody pulled the car by the rear apron. Not smart. So mine had a real large gap here between the deck lid and the body, and then it was tight here because it's pulled out. So check for, check for unusual gaps is what to do. <coughs> this stuff here is usually pretty solid, but it can't hurt to check under there. I've never seen one rot, you know, where it holds the transmission, the cradle. They're usually pretty tough, but it can't hurt to check. Are they bent? Is one bent over? Is the engine sitting cocked slightly to one side? That could mean accident. So make sure you check. Remember, unfortunately, a lot of people aren't very honest. So we went over the other side of the car the same way, so I won't be repetitive, but make sure on both sides of the car, you do the same thing. Check the gap. Make sure the gap's nice and even. Nice and even. Is it lining up? Open it up on this side. Check. Look down here. Look for rot. That's black paint, but check that area. And then check your floor pans. Another place they do rot is where the battery sits. They sell a patch panel for that. There's probably a lot of them out there where that's rotted. Not a big deal to take care of. This is called the luggage compartment. That right there is behind the back of the back seat. A lot of them rot there or down in here. Check that area really, really good. Trust me, you want to check this stuff. It, it's fixable, but you might want to move on to the next car if it says Craigslist Project. I've seen that before. It just needs TLC. Anyhow, check this area. See if it's solid. Okay. If it's a Super Beetle, check the dash. Because if these are cracked, they don't no longer sell the Super Beetle dash. They sell an ABS plastic cover one that you could put over top of it, but still. Just check it though, because they don't sell that dash any longer. I got lucky on that one. Doors, do they shut easy? Yes, mine do. Does it drop down? No. Like I said, if they do, pins, it means the hinges. 
or that dog leg down there would be rotted out on the inside. Check over both sides, check your floor pans underneath. Go over everything, make sure nothing's wrinkled or anything strange. Obviously, turn the ignition on. Walk around the car, check the lighting, make sure the lighting's okay. And of course, you want to listen to the engine. Check the engine out. Obviously, you can rebuild them, but it can get pricey if you gotta play that game. However, check the engine. Check it for end play. Reach into the engine compartment. Grab, I'm working with one hand. Grab the crankshaft, pull it in and out. I'm pulling a whole motor, it's on a dolly. See if you'll hear a little clunk. It should only have about three thousandths to five thousandths end play. That's not a whole lot, okay? Check for oil leaks. Look underneath the engine. Push rod tubes, valve cover gaskets. If it's the push rod tubes, then obviously you know you're going to be pulling the heads off. It's not hard to do, but it gives you leverage for lowering the price. Uh, Start the car up and listen to it. If you hear a little valve clatter, a lot of these sound like a sewing machine, especially if they're not properly adjusted, you know, the rock arms. But look and see if there's excessive oil. It is an air-cooled motor. It's going to leak a little. Mine, I normally don't have leaks. But if you see some oil everywhere, don't panic because, truthfully, these do leak oil. That means you could probably pull the engine out in about a half an hour, put it up on your workbench, Strip it down in about an hour or two, put all new seals and gaskets on for maybe say $100, and you have a leak-free engine. So, I just made it sound simple, but you know what I mean. But take it for a ride, and see what it feels like. There's the front end shaking on it, and even a standard can do it, not just super. So you, standard and super, you're checking the same thing. Now, if there's anything I missed, please chime in, because... No matter what, I mean, I can only think of so much, you know, right now while I'm standing here. But you definitely want to go over to car. You don't want to make a mistake. There are plenty of Beetles for sale. Plenty. And don't let somebody overcharge you either just because they say something stupid like, oh, this was a one-owner car. Well, you know what? It's going to be a second-owner car when you buy it anyhow. It does make it a little more valuable. However, to me, that stuff just doesn't matter unless it's an old split window or something. So that's that in a nutshell. All right, so we went over it. Like I said, just use your common sense when you're when you're checking a beetle out. And they're like Novas, Chevelles, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to give you some pointers on what to look at specifically on beetles. So I mean, and then you got to decide, do I want an older beetle? Do you want one from the 50s? Do you want one from the 60s? Do you want one from the 70s? Do you want a super beetle? A lot of guys sadly snub Super Beetles, and I have no idea why. Um, I own one. I'm also picking up a 68 standard that I'm going to be redoing as my second one. And it's fine. I'll have both. The Super Beetles, everybody will admit, or most people will, they do ride a little bit nicer. They, they handle a little bit better because of the McPherson strut front end. Although, they can cause you more headaches with all the little bushings in the front and everything that could go wrong. I just rebuilt my old front end. There's a there's a video down lower, but uh, honestly, you know they're all great cars. But remember, now that you're looking at Beetles, these are not fifty dollar cars anymore. They're not two hundred dollar cars no more. They went up in value. But one nice thing about the Beetles is they're continuing to go up in value. It's probably better than having a savings account and your money bringing you three percent. I don't know. I forget. But these, according to Chris are going up about 10 to 15 percent a year now so you want to check that and make sure give me so anyhow my neighbor stopped well, I had the garage door open just use your common sense when looking at these I forgot where in the hell I was at now but the point being uh, these aren't throwaway cars no longer they're collectors cars but enjoy them if you're buying one as a daily driver that's great this one's going to be used as a daily. The 68 I get will be used to play around once in a while. But that's what to look over on the Beatles. Just use your common sense. I know it's exciting when you're going to see a car. And if it's an older one, a 50s or early 60s, and you think, no, I want to put the money into it because that's what I want. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you can repair it. Anything is repairable, 
make sure you can repair it because if you can't you're going to be paying somebody and there's not as many people at work on these as there used to be so check out your stores online jbugs wolf Berks west west coast metric uh there's all kind of places aircold.net airheads i could go on and on mid-america start looking up prices of parts you know what i mean i have found coming over from my nova which i miss my nova but wow what a reduction in cost big reduction in cost on spending so i mean you're able to afford to buy a nine-piece brake line kit and put all new brake lines on for $32 shipped to your door. That was different from $200 what I spent on pre vents for a Nova. So I'm just saying. But then again, they're all they're all different. I love all cars. Well, mostly all of them. You know what I mean? But VW community is very helpful. Very helpful with each other. It's a totally different cult, so to speak. So... Drop some uh, comments down there. Maybe I missed something that you should check because I'm rushing around the garage today here. So if there's something I did miss, put it in the comments down there. Say, hey Slade, you know, don't forget people need to check this and they can look in the comments and see. But I want to thank everybody for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe, share the channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, and say something in the comments, say hello, or say you're ugly, or whatever, I, it don't matter to me. But uh, I'm going to throw a couple links down in the description there uh, of uh, a few people that I want you to check their channel also. So uh, thanks for being here, and I appreciate it. Make sure you come back, okay? I'll see you soon.